Hi, I'm glad you could join me. I'm in the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel today, chapter 13. Now, in this particular passage, uh, the king at that time had been newly crowned and newly declared, and he was a man by the name of Saul. Samuel was the prophet. And Saul was getting ready to go into a battle, and he wanted to ask the Lord's uh, uh, the Lord's blessing upon his venture into this particular battle. But Samuel delayed for whatever reason. And so Saul went ahead and made the sacrifice. And there must be something more there that we're not seeing in the scripture because Samuel condemned that and Saul understood that he was in the wrong for doing that. And so as a result of Saul's disobedience. Now, this is only one place. Later on, Saul would disobey again, and it would have even more severe consequences. But in this particular passage, in chapter 13 of 1 Samuel, verse 14, Samuel tells Saul that that God was going to uh, bring to the kingdom someone else to be the king. And he was going to be, unlike Saul, he was going to be a man after God's own heart. That phrase has been used again and again. In Acts chapter 7, we see that again, where this man after God's own heart was, of course, identified as David, who reigned after Saul did. But David was one whose whose heart was, was given to, um, uh, to, to loving God deeply and profoundly. And he had that intimacy with God that Saul did not have. Saul saw the God of Israel as one that can be manipulated, someone that he just need to rub that genie the right way so that that, that God would uh, give him the victories that he needed and the success that he desired and all of the material and human and uh, earthly things that he wanted. But that's not how David saw God. David saw God as one that was his intimate companion. He saw the Lord as the one that, that he could uh, lay all of his cares and concerns before. You read through the Psalms, so many of them are Psalms of David, and they reveal the inner heart of this man who was described as one after God's own heart. And so that's the kind of, of person that God is looking for. He longs for his people to be after his own heart, to adopt the values that he has, to draw near to him, and to experience what what God's heart is for the world around us. And that's what David did, but that's not what Saul did. And so David was one who was called in that place, a man after God's own heart. That was uh, a phrase that was used much later when Stephen is giving his defense before the Sanhedrin of, uh, of Messiah, Jesus. And he calls Jesus, excuse me, he calls David a man after God's own heart because that's an echo of this particular passage and this particular time. It's also come down through, you have probably heard that in the time that you have, uh, in all the time that you have studied the scripture and learned about King David. He was a man after God's own heart. That's the way we should be. People who adopt the values that God adopts. People who, who have the same kind of desires, the same kind of, of understanding about the world around us. We need to be following him just as David did. Now, what, how do we do that? Well, of course, we do that by developing a relationship with him. We develop an intimacy with him. 
We speak to him in prayer. We listen to him through the word. And those kinds of things are the, are the things that give us God's heart and allow his heart to be molded and, and formed in each one of us. That's what he desires. And that's what we should desire as well if we're going to follow him as David did. Father, I ask you to grant to us the grace to follow as David did. Help us to be people after your own heart, people who adopt your values, people who listen to your voice. Grant to us that grace and sustain us, strengthen us, and guide us. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.